Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Giri Varadhari Jai Gopi Janavala Bha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana but the general and the nine. but the general and Yamuna Tira on a Yamuna Tira on a Jai Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bad, Bada Mahansa, Bada Vrika, Charja, Ashto, Tarada, Sri Srimad, Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada, Kijai. Yes, Kaan Bibiti found on our Charja, Srila Prabhupada, Kijai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Padrika Charja Arstotar with the Sri Sri Mahath Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Kijai Ananda Koti Vaishnava Nikijai Dhamma Charja Srila Haridas Thako Kijai Sri Isha Panishad Kijai Samaveda Bhakti Vrinda Nikijai All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to Sri Guru and Goranga Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 24th day of June 2019 in San Diego we're reading from Sri Isha Upanishad Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are reading, beginning uh, mantra number four. Anejade kam manaso javiyo Nainan deva aptavan purvam arshat Tandhavato nyanat yeti tishtat Tasmin apo mata riswada dhati. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. Nainan deva apnuvan purvam arshat. Tandhavato nyanat yeti tishtat. Tasmin apo mata riswada dhati. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. Nainan deva apnuvan purvam arshat. Tadhavato nyanat yeti tishtat. Tasmin apo mata riswada dhati. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. 
ane jare kam mana so javiyo nainan deva apto van purvam arshad tad dhavato jnana jeti tishtat tasmin apo mata disvad dhati ane jare kam mana so javiyo Nainan deva apnu van purvam arshat. Tad davato nyan atyeti tishthat. Tasmin apo mata dishvada dhati. Dhamara Kumar Prabhu. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. Nainan deva apnu van purvam arshad. Tad davato nyan atyeti tishtat. Tasmin apo mata rishvada dhati. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. Nainad deva apnu van purvam arshat. Tad dhavato nyan atyeti tishtat. Tasmin apo mata rishvada dhati. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. Nainan deva apnu van purvam arshat. Tad dhavato nyan atyeti tishtat. Tasmin apo mata rishvad dati jma. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. Nainan deva apnu van purvam arshat. Tad dhavato nyan atyeti tishtat. Tasmin apo mata rishvada dhati. Anejade kam manaso javiyo. Nainan deva apnu van purvam arshat. Tadhavato nyan atyeti tishtat. Tasmin apo mata rishvada dhati. Okay, before I read the synonym, just one note on these Upanishadic verses that they don't fit as neatly into the metrical uh, 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 format or framework as the verses in the Bhagavatam. We're starting to get a little of that here in the second line. Nainan deva apnu. So it's going to be a little regular, and some of them get really irregular. So I have to be careful and get, you know, just follow the rules of short and long, which I can review with you if you want to, so that you'll be able to follow the irregularities. Otherwise, it can get pretty disjointed. Anejat, fixed. Ekam, one. Manasaha, than the mind. Javiyaha, more swift. Na, not. Enat, this Supreme Lord. Devaha, the demigods like Indra, etc. Apnovan, can approach. Purvam, in front. Arshat, moving quickly. Tat, he. Davataha, those who are running. Anyan, Others. Atyeti surpasses. Tishtat remaining in one place. Tasmin in him. Apaha rain. Matadishva the gods who control the wind and rain. 
the dati supply. Translation. Although fixed in his abode, the personality of Godhead is swifter than the mind and can overcome all others running. The powerful demigods cannot approach him. Although in one place he controls those who supply the air and rain, he surpasses all in excellence. Purport. Through mental speculation, even the greatest philosopher cannot know the Supreme Lord, who is the absolute personality of Godhead. He can be known only by his devotees through his mercy. In Brahma Samhita 534, it is stated that even if a non-devotee philosopher travels through space at the speed of the wind or the mind for hundreds of millions of years, he will still find that the absolute truth is far, far away from him. Brahma Samhita 537 further describes that the absolute personality of Godhead has his transcendental abode, known as Goloka, where he remains and engages in his pastimes. Yet, by his inconceivable potencies, he can simultaneously reach every part of his creative energy. In the Vishnu Purana, his potencies are compared to the heat and light that emanate from a fire. Although situated in one place, a fire can distribute its light and heat for some distance. Similarly, the absolute personality of Godhead, although fixed in his transcendental abode, can diffuse his, can di diffuse his uh, different energies everywhere. Although his energies are innumerable, they can be divided into three principal categories. Who can say what they are? Yes. Well, you're reading the book. Did you cheat? Okay. Um, the, uh, the internal potency, the marginal potency, and the external potency. There are hundreds and millions of subheadings to each of these categories. The dominating demigods who are empowered to control and administer such natural phenomena as air, light, and rain are all classified within the marginal potency of the absolute person. Lesser living beings, including humans, also belong to the Lord's marginal potency. The material world is the creation of the Lord's external potency, and the spiritual sky, where the kingdom of God is situated, is the manifestation of his internal potency. Thus, the different energies of the Lord are present everywhere. Although the Lord and his energies are non-different, one should not mistake these energies for the supreme truth. Nor should one wrongly consider that the supreme Lord is distributed everywhere impersonally or that he loses his personal existence. Men are accustomed to reaching conclusions according to their capacity for understanding. But the Supreme Lord is not subject to our limited capacity for understanding. It is for this reason that the Upanishads warn us that no one can approach the Lord by his own limited potency. Om jnana timarandasya jnana salakaya chokshu un militam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Siddha Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble basis unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, we're continuing with the issue of Panishad, and now comes a description of the Lord. Previous to this, there was a warning. The killer of the soul, whoever he may be, must enter into the planets known as the worlds of the faithless, full of darkness and ignorance. So, of course, the soul cannot be killed, but someone who is completely absorbed in the external energy, controlled by the modes of nature, does not, uh, is not even interested in things spiritual, is virtually a killer of the soul. Uh, killer of the soul means to be so absorbed in matter that you're probably sure to lose the human form of life and postpone your... Uh, self-realization for a long time. So now we have the description of Krishna. Uh, he's fixed in his abode. He's swifter than the mind and can overcome all others running. The powerful demigods can't approach him, although in one place he controls those who supply the air and the rain. He surpasses all in excellence. So the first thing, he's fixed in his abode. So that's, it's, uh, it's one of these koanic, is that a word? You know what a koan is? Seemingly contradictory thing, you know, like the one hand clapping. So the Upanishads are full of things like that. Is that, apanipano javanam grihita. 
Although he has no hands, he can grab anything. Although he has no feet, he can run it like anything. In other words, it's meant to expand our understanding uh, of, of uh, who the Lord is by kind of reaching the limits of what we think is possible and breaking through them. So this is one of those verses. The Upanishads are full of those kind of verses. So he's fixing his abode. Now, as, we, as Prabhupada quotes from the Brahma Samhita, Goloka Eben Nivasatya Kilatma Bhuto. This is a famous line from the Brahma Samhita. Although he's in Goloka Vrindavan and enjoying his pastimes there eternally, still he's in the hearts of all. And not only that, but he sometimes manifests uh, on, the, on planet Earth or other planets and, in, in, and engages in activities that are replicas of those Goloka Vrindavan planets. But still he's there. It's not like Goloka's vacant at any time. He's always there, the gopis are always there, the coward boys, everyone is always there. But sometimes they, they, he, he and they expand to demonstrate its leela in the, in, uh, on earth in order to attract us back there. So this is one of Krishna's uh, inconceivable powers, is his ability to expand and uh, act in different ways uh, without uh, any limitation. Um, he can be known only by his devotees through his mercy. Now this is right there in the Bhagavad Gita, bhakti amama vijanati yavanyaschasmi tattvataha. Only by devotional service can I be known as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna reserves the right of being behind the curtain of the illusory energy. And uh, we can't break that curtain. We can't just open the curtain on our own power. It is uh, by getting the mercy of the Lord, he reveals himself proportionate to our devotion. This is one of Lord Brahma's uh, great realizations in his prayers and the 14th chapter of the, of the 10th canto. Prabhupada would often quote this verse, Atapi te deva padamba judvaya prasada lesha anuita eva hi janati tattvam bhagavan mahimno nachanya eko pichadam vichinvam. Only by getting even a lesha, lesha means a, a small fragment, small fragment of the mercy of your lotus feet through service, atap, uh, or serving your servants also, especially. They can understand the truth of your glories because you reveal it to them. Other, others cannot, in spite of uh, reading and meditating and cogitating on the Vedas for millions and millions of years. Without that uh, grace of the Lord, he remains hidden. You come to various false conclusions and that he's void, he has no personality, or that he's limited, or, or most often in the modern day he doesn't exist. It's just a mythology. There's no God, there's no one in control. This is the demoniac conclusion mentioned in the sixth chapter, 16th chapter. excuse me. So that's why uh, it's said like that, and he probably quotes from the Brahma Samhita, Pantastu kodishadavatsada sambragamyo, that if one follows the path of yoga, impersonal yoga or even meditative yoga, uh, still the, the mind will remain uh, you know, forever far away from even the lotus feet. You can't even understand the tip of the toe of Krishna by that, those means. Only by bhakti can I, can I be known. Uh, so Prabhupada quotes there. Uh, Vishnu Purana. Now this is a favorite verse of Prabhupada. It's quoted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the uh, Madhya Lila. I was just reading it, his teaching to Sanatana Goswami. Eka desha stitis yagne josna vistarani yata parasa brahmana shaktis tate dham jagat. The fire is in one place. We're having a fire sacrifice. It's here, right? But if they build it up enough, you can certainly see the light over there in the corner. You may even feel the heat. Because fire has those two energies, uh, heat and light. So one place, but the energy extends. Similarly, Krishna is in his abode of Vrindavan, Goloka Vrindavan, enjoying, or in the Vaikuntha planets. But his energies extend throughout the entire creation, both the spiritual and the, the material creation. Of course, Prabhupada pointed out, the spiritual world is not created, but the lingo is like that, the, the expansion. So this is, this is uh, why... Uh, I mean, this is mentioned in the beginning, in the invocation, right? Om Purnamadak Purnamidam. That, the, that Krishna is eternally full and all the emanations from him are also complete, purnam, meaning that they're complete units. They have a certain function. They're not bereft of any energies that they need in order to 
you know, do what they're going to do. Uh, different planets, different species. It's it's a mind-boggling display of uh, of uh, ma manipulation of energies. And also, don't forget that the super soul is present in ev everywhere, and so the intelligence is there. Krishna's intelligence is at work in every little uh, uh, every, uh, w throughout the entire universe, everywhere. So it's, that's really like an awe-inspiring thing. Um, so. Uh, he, let's see. So, Ekadesha Sitas Yagni. Another one Prabhupada would quote about the energies. Parasya Shakti Vibhadhai Vishuyate Svabhavati Jnana Bala Kriyansha. How does it start? Um, I forget, but, it's a, it, but the meaning is that Krishna has nothing to do, he has no duties to perform. You always remember a duty can only be given to you by a higher authority. You can accept the duty, but it's, uh, it's basically just uh, you can give it up. But if, you, if you're a, a lesser being, then a, a higher being can give you a duty. Just like uh, you, you, you have a, a family. So you feel the, the duty to uh, do what's necessary to support the family and so forth. So you feel it's given by a higher authority. It's, after all, marriage is meant to be a religious affair. It's meant to be engaged in, even in West, in West, it's understood, why does it take place in a church? Because there's supposed to be a higher authority that's keeping you uh, res to meet the responsibilities of family life. So that, that's because we're lesser beings, we're not all powerful. So no one can impose a duty on Krishna, but he, he creates a, a, a system of dharma and society in which if everyone has a certain duty. You feel you have the duty as a chhatri, as a vaishya, brahman, suja, women, you know, so forth. Even children, as they grow up, they become more mature as they accept the, the sense, yes, it's my duty to do this, I have to wash the dishes and clean up and take care of my younger sister, or whatever it is. So that's uh, going on. And, uh, but, so Krishna has no one over him, but he still takes it upon himself because of his sense of, he is, feels an obligation to try to help uh, us, uh, fallen souls, those who have forgetten, forgotten him, to come out of this thrall of maya and to come back to him. So he takes it upon himself to come, right? Yadaya dahi dharmasa, glana bhavati bharata. That's nothing but a self-imposed duty. It's not his spontaneous desire to come down here, but because it's, it's like there has to be a prison house, so he's monitoring the prison and trying to help us to get out. So that's uh, who, who Krishna is. Uh, now there's also talk of these different uh, categories of energy, the internal, the marginal, and the external. And in each one of them there are different ca uh, categories. Internal has these three main categories, uh, sandhani, samvit, and ladhini. Who can say what they are? Uh, not really. Go ahead. Well, close, but not exactly. Go ahead. Ladini Shakti. Yeah, the pleasure potency, personified as Radha Shimati Radharani. Now, who's in charge of the Sundani potency? Yeah, Balaram. That's the existence potency. Uh, all the things, you know that are in this spiritual world, including the bodies of Krishna and, every, and everyone, you know, and the, the rivers, the mountains, that's all under the sandhani potency. And that's manifest the Balaram. That's why we say that the paraphernalia, for instance, the singhasan, the chamara, all of the other things on the altar, they're experiences of Balaram, the sankrishan, that in, in, in which this is how he serves Krishna. This is one of the ways he serves Krishna, by manifesting things uh, for his worship. So, and the samvit potency, knowledge potency, also has to do with ma uh, monitoring the lila of Krishna and how, we, how you know things there, all the knowledge is coming from this under the samvit potency. Now, then we are the marginal potency. It's important to remember because occasionally you read in Prabhupada's books that were manifested from the mar marginal potency, but it's more or less just a, just a language thing. We're manifested as the marginal potency and we are always in the marginal position. This is, a, this is a big question because the, the idea is, well, how did we get here uh, if we were in the spiritual world? 
because being in marginal potency, this is a direct quote from Majalila 20, I forget the exact uh, verse number, 150 something. Uh, being in the marginal potency, we have the tendency to sometimes uh, put our attention on the external potency rather than the internal and become attracted to enjoy it and thus we get covered. We forget the, uh, our position in the internal potency. We, we certainly forget that we're spiritual beings. We identify with this material body. And so that's, that's the beginning of our material life and it can go on and on and on and on as long as we stay absorbed in the external energy and have no uh, clue about the internal energy. And that's, that's why Krishna comes or sends his representatives to teach us, to teach us about this whole other realm of existence that we've totally forgotten and to give us the means to refocus our attention on the internal and give us activities to perform in devotional service to cultivate that consciousness so we can get free of the disease of material absorption, which is really what's happening. So everything is actually energies. It's Krishna and his energies and his exp expansions. Krishna's expansions and his energies. That's the reality of, of existence. But people don't know that. Uh, so these different energies are present everywhere. There's nowhere where the Lord's energies aren't present and there's nowhere where the Lord isn't present. This is why the, the Bodhi can be, you know, like Prabhupada when he was at sea, you know, on coming over or sitting in 26 Second Avenue. He always felt Krishna's uh, presence with him. He never felt alone. One devotee said, oh, Prabhupada, you must have felt so lonely there, you know, wandering around the streets of New York and so forth. He said, no, I never felt alone. I always had Krishna with me, you know, my spiritual master, like that. You realize the value of that? You know? The loneliness is like, is like endemic in the, in, in the modern world, you know? I mean, you, you travel anywhere, you just exist in a modern day, and everybody's on their, 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 you know, their handheld device. There's, there's much less lateral attention being paid <laughs> to people around you. And all of that it, it creates great alienation. People re relating to each other through these media, these electronic media, and, and it uh, causes a tremendous amount of loneliness, and, and you know, the, the uh, suicide rate is up especially among, you know, 18 to 34-year-olds and so forth. Is it, 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 for, there's many reasons for it, but part of it is just this alienation. I mean, you can stand to be poor if you have some strong uh, relationships that you're relying on, you know, and everyone else around you is... But if you're poor and, and alone, you feel alone against the world, it becomes very... you feel a tremendous weight of depression, you know. This is why Sangha is so important. In Sangha. And uh, you, you, you take strength from each other. That's the natural thing. So, uh, he's not distributed. So men are accustomed to reaching conclusions according to capacity of understanding. This is the famous frog in the well mentality. Atmaman manyate jagat. This is one of the first phrases I learned back in Brooklyn. Atmaman manyate jagat that you, 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 your opinion is, or your view of the world, is uh, uh, according to your state of consciousness. In other words, you see everything through the uh, glasses or the focus uh, according to what, where you're at, what mode you're in, your own experience. And you can see, that obviously, with children. What do they know, you know, of all of the stuff going on in the world? Practically nothing. You know, first you know it's your, your, your mother, and your father, and you, you learn about your elder brothers, you know, they're teasing you, and whatever, you know, and gradually your scope expands. So your, your view of the world and yourself expands according to your consciousness. But you, for most people, for materialists, it just expands to the level of their own place and their family and what they've got to do to live, you know. It's, it's very crippled. Krishna consciousness means expanding the consciousness, probably in the early days and in... Um, Third candle, especially, you find this phrase is super consciousness. We're trying to uh, attain this super consciousness, which means to really see and understand the workings of, of Krishna at every moment of life and seeing it in the world itself and seeing in yourself and, and uh, having that division, that divine, that divine, excuse me, divine vision. 
So that can only, can only develop when you rise above the modes of nature because the, uh, get to the point of pure goodness and you're really peaceful. You know, the mind is not uh, looking at the world as enjoyable or painful in, uh, on that level, but rather seeing it as an expansion of Krishna's energy. So the uh, Isha Upanishad helps us in that regard. So I think that's as far as we got in this purport. Any discussion on these points? Yes, Thank sir. you. So um, you're just talking about super consciousness, Krishna consciousness. Our consciousness is expanding, and our awareness and how a child is very covered over. Yeah. Um, at least in my case, sometimes it's not always a blissful thing. Like it could be a little heavy on the mind. Like, um, like just. It's hard to explain, kind of, but just like being aware of so much, you know, um, you just feel like you could go crazy or something sometimes. Do, uh -huh. you, do you know what I'm trying to say, really? Don't go crazy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I think that it, it's it's a it's a uh, Krishna consciousness, you know, revealing to you the truth. That sometimes the, the truth hurts. That you're an illusion. It's kind of scary, you know? Especially, especially when you've invested so much in a sense of self that is being challenged and even you know, destroyed by Krishna consciousness. It, 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 in, unless you're uh, uh, able to really relish you know, the nectar of Krishna consciousness, it becomes uh, almost an unbearable challenge to your, to your very being. And uh, I can see that uh, sometimes. And I, I think we all went through that, kind of breaking down your sense that you had of yourself because it really is completely false. You have to take, and if you haven't fully taken on the new identity, you kind of feel like you're floating. So it's, it's a, uh, but it's a necessary passage that you go through. Um, and, and, and to really, you know, get into the routine of, of working and acting and thinking like a devotee of Krishna, it's a, it's a great relief ultimately. You know, whenever I travel, of course, you, you know, you're always seeing thousands of ordinary people around, you know, you're in this tight plane, my God. I thought I had, uh, I really try to avoid Delta because I know they, they, they try to squeeze out every penny they can get, therefore they, they put in more uh, seats. You know, one line of seats can be like a million dollars more because it's that many more. So I thought, well, I didn't even think about it. I'm flying Alitalia. Alitalia was born out by Del bought out by Delta. So I know I'm flying. <laughs> so, but, you know, you're, you're, you're in close quarters and you see all these people and you realize, wow, every one of these people the old and the young and everyone is in, in illusion. And they're, you know, they're going through life without Krishna consciousness. And you, you kind of feel a relief in a sense that all those attachments and anxieties and worries, you, you're free from that. You know, you're, it's, it's in the, long in the background. You, know, you haven't given it up. And you can, you can really see the, the great value of the gift that Srila Prabhupada gave. You know, this is why he saw the urgency of it. Because otherwise, everybody is doomed, you know? It doesn't, matter if, it doesn't matter if there's a world war or not. Everybody that you see is just going through the, the, the um, machine, the big machine. Yantra Rudani Maya is explained like that. Prabhupada quotes that verse. Uh, you, we're riding on a machine made of the material energy. Not only our own body, but all the whole thing. And without a clue of how it works and how you can get out of that machine, it's just going to grind everybody up. They're all going to die, you know, in a matter of seconds, relatively speaking. And all of the concerns and all of the worries and all of the, you know, the, the, the cosmetics, you know, how I look and everything. It doesn't mean a thing. It's a, it's a, it's a grand illusion. It's a deep fake. I'm, get, I'm getting into this now. It's a deep fake. It's a projection of maya to convince you something you're not, give you an identity that you wanted because you wanted to forget Krishna. You know. But in the end, it's just like a bubble in the ocean. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't last. It's completely meaningless. Krishna consciousness means to, to uh, finally, after all these births, to ask the right questions 
and to place our mind on what really counts and to understand reality. Otherwise, and the 11th canon was full of this, how it's all just a big dream, you know, as you take seriously your dream one night, you know, while you're in it, but then when you wake up, you realize it's just a dream, it doesn't mean anything. So this whole material jagat is a big dream factory, you know. And, and the only way out is the, the truth that's, that is, is taught by Krishna through his books, the scriptures, and through his devotees. So it's a painful thing because we're so used to a certain identity and a certain way of thinking about ourselves. And when that's challenged and even destroyed, uh, there's a little pain there. But it's the, the suffering we have to go through to get to the other side. Jamal, you have something you're just holding on to the mic. Um, just a comment and a question. Um, so the comment is kind of, I guess, a vouch for what you're saying about this, uh, these interactions in social media and how they, how they kind of, um, for like, what's the word, um, stunt our yes, uh, ability to interrelations. Interact. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my, when I was in high school, you know, I kind of. Uh, I spent a lot of time alone, and I was constantly on social media, you know. Uh -huh. And it, so I you realized really alone. Huh? I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Right. Um, so I was constantly on social media, and um, you know, after some time, I started realizing how much it um, really makes it hard to interact with people like person to person because right. it seems like through social media it's like dominated by uh, celebrity personalities you know it's right. dominated by certain personalities and everybody's trying to follow everybody celebrity everybody's can trying be, to can be even be like a local celebrity right like yeah. a high school celebrity yeah and it's like everybody's <laughs> trying to be kind of the same everybody's trying to be fit into this certain individual mold or yeah. certain mold you know and so it um kind of takes away the individuality of the person so it leaves you not really knowing how to interact <laughs> on your own with people on your own on your own level or yeah, your yeah, natural yeah. the way that would be natural for you as a individual person because everybody's trying to be yeah. the same as each other um so anyway that's just kind of you're confirming yeah, what I thought and through actually through what I've read. Through my own yeah. experience in high school. I mean, it's I mean there's, a, there's really a lot of articles about it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are studying this and saying, well, what are we doing to ourselves here? You know? Yeah, it's a, really, it's a really hellish thing. Like, I see my siblings coming up the same way, and they're starting so much earlier than I did. Like, they're all into the iPads and the cell phones. It's, been, it's really... It's I remember really I was in uh, Canada. This was a few years ago, in Toronto. I'm going up there again. I go every July for the rest of the afternoon. And I have some friends up there who used to st study down here. I think it was the guy and the wife just, uh, just accompanied him. He was studying some computer thing, and they would come to my class. Uh, a, a young, young man and his wife, they didn't have any kids yet. Very nice. And then uh, he graduated here and he got a degree or something. And then he went up to Toronto to continue his studies and work at the same time. So they live right in the middle of Toronto. And uh, one time, I the people I usually stay with, I couldn't stay with them. So I stayed with them uh, in the apartment. By that time, they had this little uh, girl, very bright little kid, you know, named Pragya, which means very intelligent. You know, that's her name. So. Uh, and then I'm watching, and I guess it happens everywhere, you know? They gave the kid a little, I don't know, it was an iPad or maybe just an iPhone or something, you know? And it was just, you can imagine, you know, the attention is totally on there. And they have games just for the kids, you know? And I was, I was wondering, how can there be any, you know, respite from this? To really, to really, you really have to be uh, revolutionary to say no, no, and I, you know, and I can imagine the kid. As soon as they have friends, and all the friends have the iPads and the iPods, what are you going to do? So it's it's a uh, insidious thing, and it, it's also um, making people more docile. You know, they're not as independently intelligent if you're constantly being mediated by this whole thing. So it's you know, it's a, I mean, I've got like libraries of books on this thing, you know. So it is a, there can be a positive element to it, but there's also a danger of uh, stunning the mind. You know, say.
Go ahead, Pippa. Yes, Naham Prakasha service, yeah. The mic? I would die. Okay. Reconcile those two seemingly contradictory statements. Well, I guess there's there's a, there's a difference between the the idea of revealing himself as he is and taking steps toward us. The way that the steps thing is uh, the idea that if you if you just uh, begin devotional service in any in any serious way that Krishna arranges for you to continue that service and increase it. He'll, uh, you know, he's, it's like an, probably gives the example, the anxious father waiting for the wayward son to return or at least call or text or somehow contact, you know. And if there's some indication that the child uh, wants to return or wants to contact you, then you'll make every effort to uh, you know, facilitate that. You may even go somewhere, you know. So, but the, but the idea of revealing oneself as, as you are, that I think is a different step. I mean, those who are in bhakti, who are seriously, you know, chanting and trying to be devotees, um, then you can almost experience it uh, yourself. Uh, if there's a, a certain uh, day, say for instance, when this often happens in festival times, if you're part of the crew that's helping to build the cart, or you know, there's so many things to do that you get up and you chant your rounds, and there's a million things to do, and you don't even have time for Maya, you know. And uh, there'll be an experience after that, or you know, during it, when you have an epiphany, you know, that you that there's more ecstasy. Or you, I remember this this story of. Uh, uh, the, 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 one of the main people in Miami Temple since the 60s, 68, he joined, he never left, uh, is Dharmadas. Dharmadas. He was the president for a while, but then he wasn't really president of material, and he's still like head Bajari or something. But he told the story when I was there, just like 30 years ago, how he, w when he first came or soon after, he was in charge of, of the, the morning sweets, maybe the burfi and the, and the sandwich like we have here, maybe something. So he was doing it regularly, and then one day, um, or maybe there was his crew, and then one day the rest of the crew wasn't there, it was just him. So he had to work all night, you know, in order to make the burfi and the sandesh and the para and the, the, the kir, whatever it was, you know. He was like, there was no, it was, he had to step out and do something extra beyond the call of duty, you know. So finally it came to the point where, you know, he's <laughs> tired, but in the, in the morning program, and he's coming in and delivering the sweets. He's putting them on the altar, you know. So he's coming in, and he, and he described, he looked at the Lord, and he couldn't believe it. The smile was so broad. It was, a, it was like unusual, you know. It, was, it wasn't the regular deity he was seeing. <laughs> and he just felt, uh, you know, he told other devotees about it. And that uh, this, he felt, was the reciprocation that Krishna was revealing more of his beauty and his love for, you know, his devotees because he had put out so much, you know. So there's a proportional uh, revelation according to that. 
But but I think what Prabhupada is referring to, especially take one step, because that takes ten steps to you, is that uh, if you just begin devotional service um, s seriously, you'll get some kind of reciprocation. It's not going to be, you know, Krishna won't appear before you, but you'll get some indication in the heart or even externally that this is the right thing to do and keep on doing it. And, and that's what he means by you know, Krishna reaching out and taking 10 steps to you. That he's so eager to have us back and to, to, to see someone who's at least beginning to turn to him that he'll give you so much um, encouragement that you'll, you'll continue on the path. So I think there's a difference there between actual revelation and uh, Krishna's reciprocation for beginning devotees. That's the way I see it. Okay, anything else? We'll pick up there next Monday. I'll be here for another couple of weeks. Let's see, it's like the middle of July, so it'll be a few weeks and then. But I'm just gone for a weekend then. So we'll start with the second paragraph. So we'll, we'll continue with the same verse ne next Monday, Jamal, text four. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Mahal.